So, uh, take a breath, what have we done so far? We have, for this particular complex number z, which satisfies this equation, since it satisfies that equation, um, it has to sit somewhere on this circumference. We have gone and created the diagram, and then we've used that to find the maximum values of the modulus of z. So I've got them down here. Okay, what does the last part of this question ask us? Confirm your answer, the one we just found, that inequality, um, to the previous parts by using the triangle inequality, this guy here, and then they uh, provide the expression for you. So before we go any further, you can see that the whole idea here is we had to use a lot of geometric reasoning and thinking. We had to create a whole diagram and think about the modulus and what it meant. We had to do all that geometric reasoning um, to solve in this particular way, the one we've just completed. But uh, this triangle inequality, which you can see is just written in algebra here, it's kind of like an algebraic summary of a whole bunch of other geometric reasoning. That, that's where you can see that the name is the triangle inequality. It comes from the relationships between the sides of a triangle, any triangle, and the fact that certain sides, when you add them together, can't exceed um, the, the longer side and all that sort of thing. So all that geometric reasoning is, is part of the DNA, if you like, of this triangle inequality. But once it's been baked in, we can kind of just use it. Um, it's a little bit like the Pythagorean identity in trigonometry. Um, cos squared plus sine squared equals one. This comes from um, a right angled triangle, particularly a right angled triangle in the unit circle, whose uh, x coordinate is cos, its y coordinate is sine, and the radius of that circle is one. So this comes from geometric reasoning. But once you establish that, um, you know, you don't have to do any diagrams or geometric reasoning to use this in a trigonometric identity proof. You can just say, oh, anytime I see cos squared plus sine squared, I can just say that's one, I can just substitute it, right? So that's exactly what we're trying to do here. We're trying to use the geometric reasoning that's inherent within this to solve this question, find the maximum minimum values um, of the modulus of z, without having to appeal to any geometry, at least not, you know, drawing it ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to we'll write out the triangle inequality and see how we can use it to confirm this result. That's the one which we've already worked out, but we want to try and uh, prove that it's the case. All right, so here comes the triangle inequality. I'll just write it out. It's uh, absolute value, absolute value of z, take away absolute value of w, absolute value again, take a breath. Then you've got uh, less than or equal to, and you go up there to make sure you're writing everything correctly. It's going to be the absolute value of z plus w, which is less than or equal to, again, uh, the absolute value of z, uh, the modulus of z, plus the modulus of w separately. And you just have a look back, you're like, did I get it all right? Looks okay to me. All right, so this is part D. So what I'm seeking to do is I, I wanna prove this result. I wanna prove this result using this, okay? Now, in the same way that when you had a look earlier on, I was trying to understand uh, what does uh, this mean in the context of, of this equation that got provided to us. And so I had to choose an appropriate value of w that if I, I put it into here would give me the result up here, right? Now, I still have this um, as the same foundation for my question, right? So I've got, let's write it down here. Uh, the absolute value of z minus 2 minus i, it equals 1. Um, I'm somehow going to have to use it, but I, I want to choose a value of w that if I put it in here will give me something related to each of these guys. Now, look at them carefully. Which of these, 1, 2, 3, which section of the inequality is going to be uh, most easy to use to transform it uh, into looking like something like this? Well, we can do this um, through a process of fairly simple elimination if it's not immediately apparent to you which one is the most useful. Let's have a look at the right-hand side, for example. This is the module of z, uh, modulus of z plus the modulus of w. There's two separate moduli here, right? Now, because they're two separate ones, you can see, well, in here, I've only got one, right? This is the absolute value of z take away some other stuff, and there isn't another absolute value sign or module sign that appears. And you have the same problem when you have a look at the left-hand part of the inequality. You've got, you don't just have two uh, absolute values here, you've got a third one uh, bracketing the whole thing. So neither this part of the inequality nor this part of the inequality, neither of them will be very good to use to transform it into this. The only candidate left is this guy in the middle. So I need to choose an appropriate value of w that if I put it into here, will land with this. Now maybe you can think about it. Uh, it's not exactly the same as what we started with up here because I'm substituting into z minus w here, but I'm trying to substitute into z plus w here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say let 
W equal minus two minus I. Let's see what happens when we substitute this in. I can say if I take this and put it into the triangle inequality, let's give me myself another line here. Um, what am I going to get? Well, I'll just do the substitution without even really thinking about it first and see what I end up with, okay? So first, absolute value of modulus of Z, take away. Now here's the first time I'm gonna substitute in W, so it goes minus two, minus I, close my modulus and my absolute value, less than or equal to. That's the first part, let's do the next part. Modulus of Z plus, and then here's the second substitution. So it's minus two, minus I, and then close my modulus. Last one, uh, modulus of Z plus modulus of minus two, minus I. There we go. So just to highlight, um, I have chosen um, this guy here, and I've substituted it into the triangle inequality in, let's count them up, one, two, three spots. Okay, now that I've put it in, let's see if we end up with something useful. Um, what have I got over here on the left-hand side? Well, absolute value of modulus of Z take away. Now, what is this point, minus two, minus I? Well, I already know what the modulus of this point is because it's the opposite of uh, this point over here. It's just, see how this is two plus I? Uh, minus two, minus I is just gonna be on the opposite side of the origin, somewhere here, I guess. So being that it's the same distance, it's just in the other direction, um, it's gonna have the same modulus. This is gonna be root five again. So I'm just gonna write that in, root five. Less than or equal to, okay, what happens in the middle here? Well, I can expand my brackets and I get Z minus two minus I. And before I go and write the rest of the triangle inequality, this is a big relief because this thing here is something I can use. From the basis of the question, this thing is equal to one. So on the next line, I'll be able to do a substitution. I'm not there yet, I haven't finished my inequality. I should write less than or equal to, and then finally I've got the absolute value of Z plus, and I worked out this modulus earlier, the modulus of W is just root five. Okay, so um, I'm almost there. You can see if I just highlight this, I, I used orange before. So this guy here comes from the original question, right? For my particular value of Z, this thing is always gonna be equal to one. I can just do that substitution, right? So in fact, what I'm gonna do, I'll be a teeny bit lazy here. Everything else on the outsides of this inequality stays put. But this guy in here, oops, I only did the top. I can substitute that with one. Um, and you can see that just comes from uh, the question, right? So this is my substitution here. I'll do it like that. Hopefully you can see that clearly enough. And so now um, I have to think about how will I get from this line here, this weird, awkward uh, mess with all these absolute values and like multiple parts of this triangle inequality. And remember, what am I trying to prove? Uh, I'm trying to prove this line up here. This is, I did it geometrically before, but now I'm just trying to use the triangle inequality. Now, when you have a look at this, look at it closely. I know there's a, a very natural instinct to do uh, something like this. Take this right hand side. Look at that, it's so tempting to use these two parts of the triangle inequality because all the pieces that I want are there, right? You're like, oh look, I'm looking for a modulus of Z by itself and that's there. Um, I'm looking for a one, which is there, and I'm looking for a root five, which is there. It looks so tantalizingly close. So let's see what happens if I just use this. Let's just, um, whoopsie daisy. Let's just uh, follow the line of logic because um, you're gonna see something Perhaps that you didn't um, expect that um, hopefully will make sense once I explain it. I'm just gonna write one is less than or equal to modulus of Z plus root five. So I've taken the, um, the, the right hand part of the inequality and I've just written it separately to the other part of the triangle inequality. I wanna make uh, you know, the modulus of Z the subject, right? You can see it's there in the middle there of the result I'm trying to prove. So what do I do here? I'm gonna to have to subtract root five from both sides. So let's go ahead and write that. One minus root five less than or equal to modulus of Z. Um, I wanna make modulus of Z the, the, the subject of this, so I'm gonna um, switch the direction of this inequality, I'll swap sides. So if the modulus of Z is over here, now the direction of the inequality has switched and I've still got one minus root five over here. Hmm. Now, this statement is true. It's just not very helpful because have a look at what it says really carefully, right? It says the modulus of Z. Now what is the modulus of Z? It's a magnitude, right? It's a, it's a 
length, it's a distance, um, the, the smallest it can be is zero if z were on the origin, right? So I'm saying that this distance is greater than or equal to this guy, but hold on a second, like it's one take away root five. Root five is about 1.7 something or other. So one take away that is, is a negative number. So you're like, the modulus of z is greater than or equal to a negative number? Well, I already knew that. I already knew that it was going to be greater than or equal to zero. So while this is true, it gives us nothing useful for solving the question. So instead, I kind of have to grit my teeth <laughs> and look over at this other part of the triangle inequality. Now, I was resisting doing it because it looks like a garbled mess and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like, um, absolute values inside absolute values. I was trying my best to avoid it, um, but you can't because as you can see, um, looking at the other side is not useful. So in the same way, let's just write this part of the triangle inequality by itself and then see if we can interpret it. So it's the absolute value of modulus of z, take away root five, absolute value less than or equal to one. What does this thing mean? Now, the, uh, for me, when I first encountered questions like this, um, what weirds my brain out is the absolute values of absolute values. It's really hard to lose, like, keep track of what on earth does this even mean? What does it look like? So what I'm gonna encourage you to do, even though we went via this technique to try and avoid some geometry, I'm gonna bring back a visual approach to try and think about this, right? If I asked you, just uh, you know, take this as a side piece of logic, right? If I asked you to consider uh, the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1. This is the other challenge, right? It's not just the absolute values in absolute values, they're also combined with these inequalities. Um, what would this mean? Now, I think most people would be happy to solve this, but um, looking at it visually rather than algebraically, I think is very instructive. If I think about what this means, uh, this guy here, it's the function, absolute value of x, when is that function um, beneath or equal to one. So if I were to draw a really, I don't know why I drew that so small. Uh, if I were to draw a quick and dirty sketch of the absolute value of x, it might look something like this. This is a v-shaped graph here. I'm looking for where is this graph um, beneath the line y equals one. So if I put in here, uh, I'll do it dotted so you can see it a little more clearly. Here comes y equals one. I'm looking for the section underneath this, which I hope you can all see is going to be this section under here. Wow, that was bigger than I expected it to be. Uh, this section in here. So I'm looking for now the x values that will result in that. And uh, you can clearly see this is gonna be negative one, this is gonna be one. So what I really mean by the absolute value of x is less than or equal to one, I can state that same inequality without absolute values. It's between one, uh, sorry, negative one and one. That's, that's my boundaries, right? So how does that relate uh, to this complex numbers question up here? Well, I can continue my logic and I can say, well, what that really means is this two-sided inequality like the triangle inequality that uh, this guy in here, this here, I might as well just grab it. This thing in here, uh, the thing that's inside the absolute values has to be between negative one and one, like so. So can you see the parallel between this line and this line here? And you, when you see this written, you're like, oh, okay, like algebraically there's not much to go here, but you really need to understand how you got from this line to, to this line, or rather from this line to this line, you're thinking visually. To say that this absolute value is less than or equal to one means you're between negative one and one, and then you can solve accordingly. So now, I'm so close, right? I'm just gonna take all three sections of this and I'm gonna add root five to everything. So I get root five minus one, less than or equal to, modulus of z, less than or equal to, uh, and what I was I doing, I was adding root five to everything, and you can see um, that this is indeed what we got in the earlier part here, but um, we didn't have to draw this um, new argan diagram to sort of and reason through this circle and all that kind of thing. Um, we side, sort of used the triangle inequality. It bakes the geometry in, and so that's how we can prove this result. So be really careful with your inequalities. Um, they take a lot of careful thought and you don't want to just um, apply processes mindlessly. You want to consider what the things mean and then how you can choose the appropriate path through them because some of them, as you can see, end up with dead ends.